Awesome. Well, again, welcome to, and thank you so much for taking a few minutes of your uh, very, very hectic end of the year uh, time to, to join us to talk a little bit about how Park Gurdui works with partners, whether you are in high, higher education, career services, or, or other administrator or faculty member at a college or university, um, or perhaps you are with a nonprofit organization. Uh, as you'll hear, we've got a lot of different ways that we support partners, uh, as well as both students and employers. So no matter what uh, your, your target audience is or who you primarily support, welcome. And thank you so much for taking in, uh, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Kristen Schrader. Um, my background, I started in HR, did some college recruiting, but then switched over to higher ed and always have been incredibly passionate about what folks do at work and trying to make sure that whatever you're doing work-wise, you're, you're happy <laughs> that, that are uh, both with what you're doing and to help particularly early career professionals to figure out what they want to do and, and to land in the quote unquote right job for them. So I'm sure that story resonates with many of you because that's how a lot of us end up getting into uh, into this work. Uh, and as you'll see, there's a lot of, you know, at the core that that is what we here at Parker Dewey are, are here and excited to support as well. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a roadmap, uh, yes, we're recording today's session. Yes, feel free to uh, we'll share the slides and, and the recording if, in case you have to hop early or want to share this with a colleague. Uh, but please keep the chat hopping. If you have questions, comments along the way, I'll do my best uh, to answer them as close to real time. Uh, my role here at Parker Dewey is leading our partnerships team, which is primarily focusing on our school, university, nonprofit association partners, but also managing the various programs that you're gonna be hearing a little bit about for those organizations or schools that, that are wanting to use micro internships strategically to address some sort of specific uh, challenge or pain point or opportunity. So you'll hear again a little bit more about each of those, uh, but just to give you a bit of a roadmap, because we've got a very full agenda today, is we're going to uh, start by focusing on Parker Dewey itself, just big picture overview, how does this work for students, employers, and then we're going to focus on how it can work for you uh, as a potential or maybe a refresh Parker Dewey partner. Uh, if you don't remember or know too much about uh, Parker Dewey, great, not a problem, you're in the right place. Uh, but if you maybe just are new to the role or it's you know been a minute, maybe you got a little bit of an overview, that's why we're going to spend quite a bit of time talking about what are partners doing to maximize your student's success with this model. Uh, I sort of joke that sometimes micro internships are a bit of a Swiss army knife and that it can be used a lot of different ways. And so I love hearing about and seeing all the different ways that it can support, yes, your, your organization, your institution, but at the core, this is all so supporting your students, which again, is, is what we're here and excited to, to do. So before we dig in, I do have a couple of quick questions. So I've got a whole just to help me understand who all is in the room. Are you an existing partner looking for a refresh? Uh, maybe you are already aware, a little interested in becoming a partner, or maybe you don't know much, here to learn more. No matter, there's no right or wrong answer. Just curious to see where, uh, where everyone stands. All right, so a lot of existing partners, fantastic. Thank you. I hope this is a, a useful, uh, you know, use of time to, to give you get you up to speed. But then there's some folks that are less familiar uh, or or uh, don't know much. So again, excited to to connect and thank you for for taking the time. Uh, all right, I'm going to go ahead and, and end that whole one other quick question for you before we dig into the the rest of the content here, um, and that is, who do you primarily serve and support? Is it primarily students, alumni, employers, faculty? Again, might be a combination thereof, but love to understand. All right, so a lot of folks wearing a few different hats, but uh, some folks focused on students and employers definitely are the, the top choice. And a smattering of you also focus on alumni. Uh, again, really appreciate you taking the time to answer the, the questions, so thank you. Uh, I will uh, let you off the hook for uh, questions, at least for the time being, but again, I really appreciate the, uh, the responsiveness. And again, please keep these questions uh, that you have in the chat 
I little confession, I personally hate webinars because I just prefer more of a direct interaction, but it is a, a scalable way to connect. Uh, but I want this to be as productive for you as possible. So definitely let me know what's top of mind for you in the chat and I'll do my best to, to address those questions. First and foremost, a little bit about Parker Dewey. Our primary stakeholders, and you may notice we have a Venn diagram in our logo. That's because our primary stakeholders are students, companies, and you, partners, broadly defined. For students, our focus is to try to create accessible opportunities for students to launch their careers. Accessible is a key word here. We're going to talk a lot about that because it's core to how we're structured. So more to come there. For companies, Parker Dewey is primarily a recruiting tool. You, many of you might be familiar or have in your job title the phrase experiential learning. Well, for companies, yes, we see companies use this as a way to get something off their to-do list, but increasingly, we're seeing that companies say micro internships are a fantastic way to recruit. And if you think about it, how many of us have hired somebody and thought their resume was amazing, but work with them and realized maybe not so much? This allows some of that sorting out and figuring that stuff out to happen even before they get hired by working on these short-term projects. And it's beneficial for the student as well because they too can see, oh, I thought this would be amazing and yeah, maybe it, it wasn't. So in terms of companies, a way to think of this is that this is like experiential recruiting. By doing the projects, they're able to see, is the student a good fit long-term? Now, we created the micro-internship concept almost 10 years ago, uh, and our definition is that they are short-term, paid, and professional. And we'll talk a lot more about those details in a moment. But lastly, and certainly not least, is how we support you. And again, you might be a post-secondary college or university uh, representative. You might be a nonprofit organization like a chamber of commerce or someone who focuses on students from underrepresented backgrounds. We see a lot of different folks that find us and want to partner to be able to support your various stakeholders, students, employers, or others. And we're truly honored uh, to do so. And over 800 post-secondary institutions and nonprofits have thus far partnered with us. And that number continues to grow organically. If you're just hearing about us, that, again, we don't do any direct marketing to schools and to, to, to these potential partners. So super excited that you found us. And again, want to make this productive for you. But at the core, to start us off with students and, and how micro internships fit is to address some of the challenges that I would imagine if you work with students, you hear day in and day out. Student athletes that don't have time because they're so busy training, students who can't juggle work, school, and do anything that's unpaid, students who have a ton of opportunities but just don't really know what to do next, or students who maybe have a GPA that took a hit early in their undergraduate experience or who are trying to figure out and have no role models. So there's a lot of barriers and challenges that students are facing and where micro internships can help address some of these challenges by creating another opportunity for them to explore. But what's great about this model is it, just, it doesn't just support the students because we also are talking to companies day in and day out and hearing that they too have a lot of challenges. Companies that are saying they want to reach students earlier. We hear this all the time, particularly for companies that are lesser known, that students don't know who they are, they don't know what they're missing. And so they want to build their brand as early as their freshman year. Or students that might have some preconceived notions about the organization. So for example, Staples. You know, we've probably all been to a Staples retail store but Staples, the company, used micro-internships as a way to introduce students to their corporate opportunities so that students could understand that there's more there than just working in the retail store if that wasn't what they wanted to do. Then there's companies that, again, students don't know about but have amazing opportunities such as Xylem, a multi-billion dollar water technology company that's doing some really incredible work worldwide to help bring fresh water to populations that don't have it. Kind of hard to not get passionate about a mission that's that altruistic but again students don't know when they see their name xylem that that's what it does or then there's companies that all students have heard of you know microsoft pepsi but they again might have some preconceived notions so for example microsoft used micro internships not for its technology roles 
but to introduce students to roles in other departments like HR and accounting and things like that. So I've used this phrase a lot. Let me dig into the definition. Micro internships at the core are designed to be short-term paid professional projects completed on demand by highly motivated, excuse me, early career talent. Lots there, let me unpack it a little bit. So short-term in that these are designed to be projects. If you think about what students are doing during a traditional internship, they're probably doing five or more projects over the course of their summer. Well, each of those individual experiences could be a micro-internship. We find that most projects, micro-internships, tend to be between 10 to 40 hours, but they all have a specific deliverable, all a resumeable experience that they can take, grow from, learn from, document on their resume under the experience section, and talk about in a future interview. These are designed to be a stepping stone, not a replacement by any stretch for an internship or any other experiential learning that they may need or have to do as part of their, uh, of their academic program, but something that they are doing to enhance, to differentiate themselves, to get, because maybe those traditional internships just aren't accessible to them for whatever reason that they, they might be juggling. For the companies, a big benefit of this is that they are de designed to be on demand. So you know, even companies that have traditional interns love micro internships because they have projects year round that may not align to when they have an intern in the office. And the other piece is that Parker Dewey handles all of the administration. So the students are working on our books and not on the different companies' books. This provides two benefits for the students. It makes it easy so that they can do lots of different types of experiences with lots of different companies. But then all of that is aggregated come tax time onto one 1099, again, making it easier so students don't have to play collections agent, don't have to track all of the different invoices and things like that. We take care of that for them. This is allowing students to get an introduction into the gig economy, but with some training wheels, just giving them that exposure. And if they love freelance work, awesome. We recommend after they've been doing whatever they want to do long-term, there's other platforms they can go to at that point when they're looking for more advanced experience. We are very focused on the early career stage of one's professional journey. But also for the companies, as I mentioned before, this is designed to be recruiting for them, We're designed to help them meet students that maybe they otherwise would have missed. And so for the companies, not only does this make it easy so they don't have to figure out how do I get a student on my books for some sort of short 10, 20 hour project, but this allows them to meet the student, get to work with them, and if they and the student find that perfect fit, there is no cost for the company to hire them. That is our goal. That is our mission. We want this to be a stepping stone for the student. And we want this to be a great way for companies to find the talent that they may otherwise have missed. The other piece that's core to our mission is that these should be paid. We don't do anything that's unpaid on Parker Dewey, full stop. The primary vetting criteria for the projects posted on our platform is, is it paid fairly? Now, fairly from our perspective, starts at around $20 per hour. Yes, we see projects that are more or less than that, but again, $20 is how they set up and they're fixed fee engagements. So the companies will post the project, the students will see how much they'll get paid upon completion, no matter how many hours it takes them to work on the project. Lastly, the other primary vetting criteria that we're looking at for these projects is, is it professional? And so we don't have projects where it's babysit my kids or walk my dog. There's other places to go if students want those kinds of experiences. Nothing wrong with those, but that's just not what we do. These are designed to be professional types of projects similar to what a student would do during that summer internship or that first job after they graduate. Now, the cost. I mentioned already for the students that every project is paid, but also there's no cost for them to create an account we don't do anything that's going to cost the students money. Because again, that just, in our opinion, goes against the mission of what we're here at Parker Dewey to do. Now, I will talk about populations of students that may have some challenges and barriers when it comes to doing paid work. So international students, undocumented students, more to come there, so stay tuned. For companies, there is no cost to post or create an account on Parker Dewey, and they set the price for the project. And again, I'll show you how that works shortly. 
Every project has a minimum of $15 per estimated hour of work. And again, these are designed to be fixed fee, so students aren't turning in timesheets and so on. 90% of the total project cost goes to the student upon completion. Now, Parker Dewey does retain 10% of the, at the top of every project that covers our costs of administering. But again, 90% goes directly to the student upon completion. Lastly, schools, nonprofits. There's no cost of partnering with us either. And we'll talk more about some of the details with that. Well, we did launch some additional partnership options that do have a funding, you know, funded requirement to it. So again, talk a little bit about that. But again, at the core, we have a basic no cost partnership and uh, are honored to support uh, those institutions who wish to, to, to work with us in that. So students, how does it all work? Well, it takes less than 10 minutes there's no data integration. The students are creating their own accounts using whatever email and information that they want to do so. So a way to think of this is kind of like how you might be promoting LinkedIn. So we don't require any of your IT systems access whatsoever. Now, once the students have created their account, they'll see the projects that are of interest to them. They can apply to whichever ones are of interest to them. And if they're selected, they get notified via email and they can then complete the project. When they're selected, they're immediately put in touch with whoever posted that project. So this is something where, again, they have not only the benefit of project resumeable experience and getting paid, but also that direct networking opportunity, that mentorship, if you will, with the project supervisor. And again, behind the scenes, we're doing the vetting of these projects. We're handling the payment to the students. So it's designed, again, to be very easy for all involved. So just to give you a little bit more detail, the profile itself, again, five, 10 minutes, if you haven't already, you're welcome to create a, an account yourself if you'd like to do so. Most students do find out about Parker Dewey via a student-facing partner landing page that we build for you. And we'll talk more about that. It's part of our no-cost basic partnership that you see here with this Colorado State example. But then they upload their photo if they'd like. They can put some information about uh, where they've worked, et cetera. It's a very succinct profile that they can complete, uh, and then they see the projects that are currently available. Now, a few things to know about the projects on Parker Dewey. First of all, there's two sections. One is a featured projects section, and if you were logging in right now, you may or may not see that section. Featured means that whoever posted that project said they only want students from certain schools to see it. So there may not be featured projects for your students right now, the way that you can change that is by sharing micro internships in Parker Dewey with your employer partners. And again, we'll talk more about that. But then there are projects that are always available open to all students. That's what it means when it says all open micro internships. Also know that for any one project, they might be looking for one student, but they also might be looking for five, 10, 100 students. It, very well can be something that companies are using to be able to hire multiple students, to be able to see multiple students in action on the same project so that they can get a sense of the quality of that student's work compared to some of the others. Now, when students are looking at the project, they can click details, read more about it, the description of this project company, the dates, etc. They'll see how much they're going to get paid if they're selected. They'll see if it's remote versus on site. Well over 90% are remote. So most, again, are very much remote. Some can be on site though, uh, if a company or project might need it to be so. And then lastly, when they apply, they are instructed to answer at least one short answer application question. There's always one, but a company can add additional questions if they wish. Now these questions are critical. And those of you who work with students, this is a really great way for you to proactively advise your students or if you're meeting with students one on one for you to maybe give some professional development coaching, because we see a wide range of quality when it comes to these uh, application responses. Case in point, here's two examples. This, these two students applied to the same micro internship. This particular project specifically said that it was being used and only open for students who might be interested in a full time role in this organization's sales rotational development program. It's a medical device company. And as you can see from Emma's response, she did her homework. She researched a little bit about the company. She had a really strong answer for why she was interested and a good fit for that particular project. Wyatt, on the other hand, had a relevant experience, which is great, 
but there was a typo in the first line of his response. He didn't upload a resume. So there's just some opportunities to improve that just made it so that Wyatt's application just didn't stand out nearly like it did with Emma's. And by the way, when you get the deck, uh, the, the slides, feel free to click on lots of little links that we have throughout this, this presentation, including some additional examples of actual student responses from a student who was selected compared to those who weren't. Now, this isn't rocket science. This is the exact same content that you're probably already sharing with students, those of you who work directly with students. But this is a way to get an insight into some of those professional things that students aren't doing that they need to do. And our thought is, you know what, if they are making mistakes like Wyatt is here, let's empower you to help coach Ryan, so, or excuse me, Wyatt, so that hopefully students like Wyatt will, if they make a mistake, do it here and not when the stakes get even higher for those longer term opportunities, internships and so on. Now, I mentioned this already, but once the student is selected, immediately put in touch with that project supervisor. They then schedule some sort of meeting via Zoom, Teams, whatever works best for both of them. And then the students working typically asynchronously, whatever schedule works best for them. There are projects that occasionally may require a student to be in a specific location in a specific period of time, but those are definitely the exception. Most of these are asynchronous, where the students working whatever hours they want, so that they can meet the deadline that uh, is agreed upon with the uh, project supervisor. Now, we all along the way, Parker Dewey is checking in with the student and the employer to make sure that things are staying on track, to share best practices, to act as that support. But we find that students holistically do a really, really great job. Uh, we have an over 98% project success rate. So again, students, they're getting a great education from your institutions and they wanna put it to work. And micro-internships are competitive. And so this is a really great opportunity for students as early as their freshman year to be able to give, be given that chance to shine. And we hear and see students doing micro-internships for a variety of reasons. Yes, getting paid is, is great, but there's a lot of other benefits as well. And again, every student has their own unique reason for why this is a good resource and, and helpful for them. And you can hear and read a little bit more about these. We have lots of student testimonials uh, that you're welcome to dig into later on if you'd like. Now, touching just quickly on a couple of populations. So first of all, international students. Yes, we do see international students like Cy, the one pictured on the, uh, on the screen, uh, complete micro internships. And I'll put Cy's uh, testimonial in the, uh, the chat here, uh, his, his success story, excuse me. Uh, can read a little bit more about it. I love the fact that he specifically called out how this allowed him to create a network in the United States that he otherwise wouldn't have had. Um, so again, if you're curious, I'll put this link uh, in the chat to read a little bit more from students like Sai. Um, they do have to have work authorization though. So we're usually hearing students say that they're using pre-completion OPT versus CPT to be able to do a micro internship. Um, we are the employer of records. We're happy to write the offer letter for the student. Uh, but again, that's typically what we're seeing. And also happy to field questions from your international student office uh, should uh, the, the need arise or if you have questions. The other population I want to touch on are undocumented students. Uh, and here we do see a lot of undocumented students who are able to pursue micro internships, even without DACA or TPS. And if you're not familiar with some of those acronyms, TPS stands for Temporary Protected Status. And the DACA program has been on hold for a couple of years now. So, so new students are not able in, in most cases to be able to, to, to pursue this, uh, but they can do micro internships if they have a valid individual taxpayer ID number. And so again, great opportunity for those students who have that documentation. Uh, and so it does take a little bit of time from what I understand from some of our nonprofit partners that support undocumented students. Uh, so we do require that the students have their ITIN prior to applying. Soon as they get selected, they're instructed on how to get set up in our payroll system, which will require them to provide this uh, documentation so that we can legally pay them. And so again, we collect that at the onset. That's why we wanna make sure the students have that documentation prior to applying. So a question that just came through, uh, so are there micro internships for a wide variety of liberal arts majors? Great question. What we find is that most employers are major agnostic for micro interns. They don't necessarily care who, if a student's studying whatever. There are 
exceptions to that. There are companies who specifically are using this to recruit engineering students and need students that are, we just had one a couple of weeks ago, structural engineering. I had to Google what that meant. Uh, but that, in their case, was what they were specifically looking for. But again, that's the exception more than the norm. Most of the companies just are looking for the student that is the best fit for the project and like the fact that micro interns, or micro internships allow them to try students that they may not have otherwise considered. We hear from companies, for instance, that only focus on business students in their corporate recruiting, but like that micro internships allow them to engage those liberal arts students because they recognize that, yeah, there's amazing students that are studying English and history and communications and whatever else. Uh, are applicants verified as part of the University of Listed? No, it's just, again, very similar to LinkedIn. This is the honor system for uh, the, the students. So that is something to definitely coach them. Um, and then we run a program that is approximately 80 students per school year. Will there be sufficient number of micro internships for these students? Great question. We're going to talk a little bit about programs similar to what you're talking about, especially scalable. Uh, in this particular case, though, we're definitely going to want to encourage you to engage your employers because otherwise those 80 or however many students are competing in against students from across the country. And so not engaging your employers who are specifically looking for your students is certainly going to put your students at a, at a disadvantage. There's no guarantee that your students would be uh, would be selected. So I hope that answers your question, Yogis, uh, to, to get you started. But now we're going to turn a little bit about uh, how it works for companies. Uh, and so again, three quick steps, post a project, pick the student that they want to work with, and the work gets done. Because again, we are handling all that back in administration. But just to talk a little bit about this in more detail, most of the projects come from our project library. And if you want to take a look at some of these, this might give you some ideas of the types of projects that we regularly see. Now, this is not a comprehensive list, but these do give you some idea that, okay, projects for students who are studying the fi in financial services versus sales and business development uh, versus more of the operations or technology. There's a wide variety. And this is not designed to say that only students who are majoring in these things would be interested. We see, for example, under research and strategy, you know, business plan support. It's a great project for those liberal arts students that we were just talking about earlier. We have these really great critical thinking and writing skills that might be even better than some of those business students in, in many cases. And I say that as a business student myself or a former business major. We also set up employer facing landing pages for our partners. This particular example is from Rutgers Business School, but we do as part of our basic no-cost partnership. Happy to set that up so that you have a tool to use to engage employers within your network. Now, the projects themselves, when they click on one of these project templates, it pre-populates that particular project, or they can start from scratch and type in the, the description however they like. Uh, it will pre-populate estimated number of hours, how much the students would get paid, and so on. Uh, but again, that is flexible and the company can post whatever dollar amount that they want, so long as it is at least $15 per estimated hour of work or higher. There is also a section where the companies can say that they only want students from specific schools or we call it affiliation slash program. So if I have an affinity for student veterans, great, I can put veteran as a affiliation and students who have that in their profile would see those projects and those who wouldn't would not see that. From there, the companies will only see those students who have applied. So Parker Dewey is not a resume database. If I were to create a company account right now, I won't see any students until I post a project. And then the only students that I'll see are those who applied to my project. That's just part for security reasons. We want to make sure that students aren't being contacted by companies that they're not interested in. But similarly, we also want to make sure that companies don't have thousands upon thousands of students to, to weed through because there's other platforms that do that. And we've heard from companies that that's a lot. And we yeah, want to make sure that the students that they are seeing are ones who actually want to work with that organization. Now, from there, they can see the student's profile. They can see how they answered those short answer questions. They can see their resume, LinkedIn profile, if they chose to provide it. But again, those short answer questions are key. That is the primary way that a student is selected or not selected. So definitely, it's front and center. Before they even see the resume, it's really, really critical for those of you who are student-facing 
to make sure your students do a really fine job uh, on those uh, responses. So why do companies use this? Again, like the students, a lot of different reasons. They like that it's easy, that it's no risk, no commitment and so on. But then they also really like that this allows them to engage lots of students for a fraction of the cost. Even during the COVID years, we all saw and heard from companies that you know, nobody could get to every career fair, even when everything was virtual. And so this allows them to engage students at schools that they may not have ever heard of and do so at scale and be able to get their brand and awareness and engage students as early as their freshman year all the way through until after they've graduated. We see a lot of students in their first year and particularly in their second year do micro internships. So this becomes a great feeder for companies into their traditional internship programs that might not be held until after their sophomore or junior year. We also see unique use cases, such as when companies say, oh, I have specific focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and I'm really interested in meeting and reaching students that, you know, again, might be from these underrepresented backgrounds. The fact that micro interns are paid really allows students that, again, might have otherwise been left behind through other traditional recruiting to be able to participate. We see that in the data that I'll share with you shortly. And then we also see alumni who are excited to work on micro internships as a way to give back and as a way to mentor and to have a really great uh, relationship and, uh, and give that student that resumeable experience as well. And in case it's helpful, we do have a number of different uh, success stories that, that uh, you're welcome to look at in greater detail. These are all fairly lengthy and talk about all the different nuanced reasons and ways that companies are using micro internships. And I'll put that link in the chat. Uh, but then there's also a one pager that you can certainly share with organizations, which summarizes a little bit about why and how they use micro internships. Now we are pretty particular about not putting a ton of brands on our website because for companies, we're hearing that they're using micro internships as a competitive advantage. This is a bit of a newer strategy for them. They don't want it to be out there that this is what they're doing. And so those companies that are posted on our website or on that flyer, those are ones who've actually publicly spoken about my, their micro internships in a public setting. So that's again, just uh, to give you that, 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 uh, that detail there. One other piece to keep in mind, and this might be something for those of you who work with employers that you may wanna print off and keep handy on a bulletin board in your office somewhere. But this particular resource is designed to help you give you, give you some talking points about where and how micro internships fit in when you're talking to companies real time. And again, I'll put this in the chat. But if you're hearing, for example, from an employer that says, you know, I want to build my brand and students don't know who we are. And so, great, here's how micro internships can help. And along with that, some data to prove it and a quote from the student and so on. And you can share these freely with your employer partners to just give them some additional resources of yet another way that they can engage your students. This again, is it designed to replace internships or any other on-campus interviewing or coming to events and so on? But this gives yet another way that they can support your students and connect and recruit at your institution. And just to give you a quick example of a school that's really blown it out of the park with doing just that is Florida A&M. Now FAMU is very, their students are in high demand. Most of them have multiple job offers by their junior year. So for most of the FAMU employers, the pain point that FAMU hears is brand building. How do I get on these amazing students' radar as early as possible before the students commit to a known, an organization that might be better known? And so they've used micro internships with that intentionality. And as you can see, they've got lots of students who've done these projects. Now, they've also been a beneficiary of a grant that supported students from HBCUs as well as institutions in Florida and Connecticut. If that is you, please reach out to me, make sure we, we talk because I want to make sure your students are benefiting from this as well uh, to as great of an extent as possible. The other thing I want to highlight about FAMU is that they're a handshake school, like many, many others. And every one of our partners has a relationship with whether it's Handshake or Simplicity or, or uh, 1220, I'm blanking on uh, so, you know, grad leaders and so on. In the case of FAMU, this is how they put micro internships on their employer facing website. So yes, if you have a job or internship, go to Handshake. That's what, what they use. But micro internships, yet another way 
to engage with their students. So it's not that it's competing, it's just another additional resource for these companies to recruit at FAMU. Also, their, or their outreach has been both focused on companies and students. And so you can see some of the different messaging that they've used. Primarily with students, it's been social media. So those two posts you see are micro internship spotlights they gathered and that they posted on Instagram. And then they put together a really cool infographic that they sent out to their entire employer network within Handshake. And they've had some significant interest in traction. Um, and then they promote specific micro internships as well. Now, when it comes to the Parker Dewey kind of metrics, if you will, I just want to highlight just a few things. First of all, how many companies have it's ever changed? Uh, since the over the past 10 years or so, uh, it's thousands, organizations as small as the mom and pop companies that none of us have heard of, all the way to the organizations that are household names. We see government organizations, nonprofits, it's really the, the full gamut. Now, many companies are posting just for target institutions. They're saying, I have a relationship with this school. I only want to work with their students. And how those companies are hearing about micro internships, again, is from that school's efforts in marketing. We also see the students do a phenomenal job. 97% of the companies, when they're evaluating the students' work, said that the project deliverable either met or even exceeded the expectations. Um, and you can see some of these other metrics on the student side. We hear that 95% of students say that real short-term work experience is how they want to be recruited. So this is meeting the student's demand. We're also hearing in this particular data point, this 80% is something that we're particularly proud of. That's the number of micro-interns selected who come from historically underrepresented backgrounds. Now, that's not something that we are influencing in the sense that we're, you know, Parker Dewey doesn't pick the students. This is happening organically because these short-term paid projects are accessible to so many students that, again, may not otherwise have access to paid experiential learning opportunities. And we do see also that the students who are completing micro-internships not only are more likely to be professionally employed upon graduation, but are more likely to stay in that job for over a year. And speaking a little bit more about the students, we evaluate the students about what the impact of that micro-internship was and we say based on the eight NACE career readiness competencies, and you can see the students have really uh, you know, said by and large that they've seen some significant improvements, even after just a short-term project of 10 or 20 hours. But what gets me most excited is not the improvement stuff, that's great, but also this no change, but I build confidence. Because as I've mentioned a few times, micro-internships are designed to be stepping stone opportunities. They're designed to help students set might be struggling with the imposter syndrome. We hear it and see it all the time, and I'm sure you do as well. This is the biggest barrier for students about why they don't apply if they don't think that they can. But micro-internships are just that lower stakes way for them to realize that yes, they can put to work with their learning in the classroom and they do a really, really fantastic job. So if you take away anything from today's conversation, make sure your students know that this is designed to be that stepping stone resumeable career enhancing experience. That being said, let me talk a little bit about some of the different ways that we support some of our different partners. Uh, we rolled these out earlier in the summer and essentially based on feedback from existing partners, uh, we have several different options. So if you are getting a refresher for today, nothing has changed when it comes to your basic partnership. You still have the landing pages. We're still happy to do different webinars and presentations and so on. We can talk a little bit more at a later time about some of the nuance of that. Uh, you can access your data uh, up to once a year. You can do it more if you're engaging employers. And so again, happy to, to, to continue to support. Uh, we do have a checklist of activities that we do want our partners to complete on an annual basis just to make sure that data is as compelling as possible. Uh, so those checklists are things that you would want to be doing anyway if you want to promote micro internships. Share this with your students, share this with your companies so that there are opportunities available for and, and everybody's knowing about these, these, this program. And we did release a, pro, a platform earlier uh, this summer called Parker Dewey Plus. We developed this based on feedback from you, who said, or from our partners that said, you know what, we love getting the data, but we wanna be able to, to get it more on demand. 
And so that's why we established Parker Dewey Plus. And then we also have had a number of different institutions and organizations who said, you know what, we have funding for experiential learning, but we want to stretch those dollars to support as many students as possible. And so for that, we developed Parker Dewey micro internship programs where we'll manage how and the the uh, the different uh, funding and so on is spent to support your students to work on projects on behalf of your employers. So I just said a lot. Let me take in a little bit because there's a lot of, of nuance there. First of all, the basic and again, no cost partnership. If you're not a partner already, this is where it all begins. Um, and that is we'll start with your uh, building out a website to engage your students and to engage your employer partners. And so just to give you a quick snapshot, obviously Parker Dewey University would go away and be your institution logo. Uh, we would swap out these lovely people here that I don't think go to your school and with your students or your campus, your colors and so on. We've been doing extensive testing over the past couple of months to make sure that the calls to action and the organization of these sites are as clear as possible. Uh, and we've got some data points, so this is all for students. We'll set this up, takes typically between one and two business days to get all of this established for you. Similarly, we'll also create something on a page for you to engage your employers, which again, same kind of concept, except explains how it all works from an employer's perspective. And we'll include some templates so that the companies can get a sense of the kinds of projects are a good fit for this model and so on. This also includes resources for both students or employers so that they can dig a little bit deeper if they have questions and, and want to learn a little bit more. And again, there's FAQs, there's a form if they have additional questions and so on. These forms and things, that goes to us. You don't have to become an expert on micro internships overnight. We want to support your companies and provide this additional resource uh, if, if uh, you know, they still have questions and, and need help. We also have a ton of marketing collateral to make it really quick and easy for you to get started with promoting micro internships. And so this collateral, it's all organized, pick your particular audience, and you can find in this case, it's student focused social media and videos and emails, flyers, all the things. And then whether you're focusing on students, employers, alumni, faculty, there's content uh, for all those different audiences. These are designed to be very much plug and play. So for example, let's say you are meeting with an employer in a few minutes and you wanna give them a little blurb about micro internships. Well, here's a quick little flyer that you can print off. If you only have a few seconds, here is that flyer in PDF form. If you have a couple of extra minutes, you can also open it up in Canva and be able to customize this particular flyer with your logo, uh, your colors, if you like, quotes, et cetera. And you can see Oakton College, CSU Pueblo, uh, Fort Hayes Tech Northwest, et cetera, that have done just that, added their logos, and colors and, and, and so on. We want this to be easy. Similarly, our team is always available to be able to consult with you one-on-one. -on -one. We wanna understand what are your goals for micro internships? How can we best support you in helping your students, employers, or whoever else you're trying to engage? And then lastly, data, so that you can understand how many of your students have created accounts, who have they worked with, what are some of, how much have they earned, what are the dates, uh, and so on. We're providing that for you up to one time a year at no cost. And again, we just want to make sure you're promoting micro internships to your different stakeholders. And so we've created these checklists when you're first getting started to things that we want you to do each year to some additional ideas of what other schools are doing who are really blowing this out of the park and being able to, uh, to, to, to engage micro internships at scale. And so these are things that starting in the new year, we're asking our partners to complete the annual must do, this little blue checklist here on an annual basis so that you can get access to that data. But again, just also to make sure that the data has content that's compelling, that is showing that your students and employers are aware and are engaging in these opportunities. Without you sharing, the data is not gonna be nearly as interesting because nobody will have heard about micro internships. Now, again, we developed Parker Dewey Plus, which is our annual subscription option based on feedback from our partners who have said that, hey, I work with students. I need to have access to this data on demand. I want to be able to see my students' profiles, to be able to proactively coach them on how they can improve and so on. And so whether you work with students, employers, or both, there's something in here for you. So 
If you work with students, for instance, you can see at a high level how many students have created accounts, how many have applied to projects, how many have applied to five or more, because we see that that five, that persistence, tends to be a big tipping point for success. How much have they earned and so on. You can see the student's profile. So this Margie Lee, for example, and again, this is a dummy data. We're not, dis we're not disclosing students' personal uh, profiles, but you can see how they presented themselves. Do they upload a resume? How do they respond to these short answer questions and so on? If you work with employers, you'll be able to see every company who has created an account by using the link on your landing page. So you'll see whether or not they posted a project, you'll have that list. You'll have what description they provided for their organization so you can follow up with any of those organizations that, that are of interest to you. You also can see the feedback that your students have received, both the bar chart that you see on the, the screen, but you can also download to be able to proactively reach out to any student who was rated expected more. You can see who they are. You can follow up with those students. You can provide them with some coaching and guidance. Some of you might already have access or at least be eligible to have access to Parker Dewey Plus at no cost. So if you have an existing program funded by your institution for a year or more, uh, or actually for $10,000 or more, you get access to Parker Dewey Plus for free. No, you know, no ifs, ands, or buts. That's just uh, what, uh, what we're, we're honored and excited to offer. You also, if you are eligible for a Parker Dewey Run program, we have a number of different programs that are funded by third parties. So for example, if you are an institution located in Connecticut or Florida, or you're at an HBCU, or you're a member of the HSI Career Collaborative, you get access to Parker Dewey Plus thanks to, to the DeLuca Foundation, who has provided Parker Dewey with a grant that included access to Parker Dewey Plus for any eligible institution. And you can see a few other additional options of, of programs. You can see the dates as well, because they're, you know, they're grants, so as you know, Grants are uh, always uh, persnickety things that do have deadlines. But I would encourage you, if you haven't already taken advantage of the access to this, I'll put my email in the chat. Feel free to drop me a line and just say, hey, I, you said something about Parker Dewey Plus. I think I get it for free. Let me know. We'll get you all set up uh, and get that, that ball rolling so that you can get access to this as soon as possible uh, so that, again, you can start using this to support your students and, and, and employers. Some other features, again, just to be aware of, student ambassadors are not for those funded programs, just so you know, uh, but you still will have access to be able to download an impact report. So you can see how many of your students have participated in the program over the past 12 months, if that's of interest to you. Now, one other level of partnership is what we call a program. Um, and again, this, if it's $10,000 or more, it includes Parker Dewey Plus, but to be clear, that $10,000 the significant majority of that spend goes directly into the pockets of your students. That's why it costs so much, it's going to your students. Think of this as a way to support whoever students you're, you're funding for maybe traditional internships. Usually those stipends are maybe three, $5,000. For that same amount of money, you can multiply the number of students, sometimes 10, 20 fold, depending on how you wanna to, to, to divide this up. So for just definition purposes, these are paid micro internships posted just for your students to be able to work with whatever organizations you choose. So you decide the students, you decide the employers, broadly defined. Uh, the schools who are doing this, and you can see some examples, it's not just schools, your institution may also be benefiting, your students may also be benefiting from some of these corporate funded initiatives as well, such as IBM or HubSpot, uh, that has funded micro-internships to support students at dozens of institutions. Uh, but this might support some of your institutional goals. Uh, it certainly helps to stretch that experiential learning budget. But it also, we see schools who say, we want to support students that just can't do traditional internships. We want to target this towards them or sophomores or, you know, again, populations that just are needing support. How long have we been doing this? Well, it's almost been well, almost four years. Our earliest partners were the uh, Kansas Micro Internship Program, which is a statewide initiative, uh, as well as uh, Swarthmore College, which has been focused on alumni. And we'll talk more about that one in a moment. 
Um, and we see a number of, of other institutions and organizations who are you know, proactively engaging with us in this capacity, uh, whether it's higher ed institutions, nonprofits, uh, for profits, uh, and so on. And again, you can see some of the quotes if that's of, of use as well uh, for what these other institutions and organizations have said about their experience. Um, one of the biggest questions I know I would have if I was listening to all of this is how are folks funding this? Um, and so we see a lot of it being user lose budgets where it's, oh, I've got this amount for a grant. It's gonna expire. I wanna put it in the pockets of my students. That's exactly what George Washington University did when they first started their micro internship program nearly three years ago. They had this grant, it was $5,000. They were gonna bring in a speaker and they said, you know what? We wanted to go to the students. And so instead of it going to the speaker's pockets, it went to supporting 25 different students who were completing micro internships, 10 hour projects, real succinct, but gave them some real world experiences. Many others are, fu are funded through grants that are targeting specific initiatives. Uh, and then we see corporations, we see alumni fund funding these, so it's a, a wide variety. And again, just to give you a quick idea of how the money is spent, these are just three examples of how much goes to the student versus how much is funding program management. That's the time for that Parker Dewey is spending to manage this, to make this easy for you. Um, this is all based on 20 hour micro internships, but we see projects that are shorter as well as ones that are longer. And so we can flex, be flex or even programs that have different levels and durations of projects, depending on the goals. And so again, we run all of this, we set up the portals, we set up and run the day-to-day, -day, we handle the, the data collection, and it certainly uh, can help with the impact report so that you can understand, did this meet the goals? Our overall goal is to make this as low lift for you as possible, but also high impact for whatever your goals might be. And just to give you a couple of case studies of who other, other schools who've done this. I mentioned Swarthmore already. Their program is running right now. That's been focused on winter break since about two years ago. Uh, the most recent iteration was winter break last year. And you can see the, the, uh, uh, the metrics. They had 57 students during these projects with 70 different alumni. Uh, and so again, really great opportunity for students to capitalize on those four to five weeks of winter break time that they otherwise uh, might uh, not have used for, for a professional development opportunity. The other thing with the Swarthmore program, and we see this with many, many others, is that these alumni, especially since this program is only available during winter break, the alumni are so excited to engage with the students. They're asking about it year round. And in some cases, they're actually also posting projects on their own that they are self-funding because they're seeing the value and really wanting to engage with the students year round. Another example is with the University of Delaware. Uh, their program has focused on introducing undergraduate students to careers in public service. And I love that example uh, just because, you know, what a unique way to give students that bite-sized way of exploring a career option that they may otherwise have missed, as well as supporting nonprofits and government and as a state institution, that aligns with the strategic objectives of the institution. Uh, and so we've, this program also has been restructured recently and this year is running over the winter break as well uh, for, for this particular uh, year's cadence. And then uh, in the case of George Washington University, I mentioned this program already, but I wanna just highlight that those 25 students that completed the projects, one of them, again, 10 hour project, ended up converting into a full-time role with Ernst & Young, the student uh, they, they, she called it the, uh, you know, the, the well-spent study break and the company shared with us, yeah, we would have missed the student. They were not on my radar uh, whatsoever. So we're happy to talk a little bit more about this. We do a webinar regularly. There was one just a couple of weeks ago uh, that uh, you can certainly dig into if that's of interest to you to learn more. But speaking of webinars, we do regular webinars for students and employers as well. So you are welcome and encouraged to promote these to your students and employers. If they do want to learn more, this is a way for you just to have this ongoing event that you can promote to both audiences year round. We do these every month. The case of students, we do a web, uh, webinar about 45 minutes, it's a general FAQ for students to get them started. It's recorded. They can always check out the link to the recording and the slides on the registration page if that particular date and time doesn't work for them. For companies, I'm sorry, excuse me, for students, we also do a, web, a, a 
open office hours every month as well. Now this does have a specific date and time that is not recorded. That's so that students can feel free to ask whatever is top of mind. But again, you're welcome to, incur, uh, to engage your students and share those events with them. And then we host a monthly Introducing Micro Internships for Employers webinar that you can certainly share uh, with, with your organizations. Or if you're curious, you can come. It's this Thursday. I think it's 1 o'clock uh, Eastern time uh, if uh, you're curious to, uh, to join the next iteration of this particular webinar. So just to close this out, how to help your students succeed, it, the secret sauce is, is very simple. Share this with employers. Share this with alumni. Share this with other institutional stakeholders so that they can post these opportunities for your students. Yes, we have a business development team that is engaging employers, but the best way for your students to be successful is for you to share this with those who already know and want to work with your students because that just creates even more opportunities. And so if you want to see additional case studies for organizations and institutions who've done just that, certainly you can check out uh, the links that are available throughout the PowerPoint as well as at the, at the end here, uh, if, if that's uh, you know, of interest, depending on your goals. Um, what we do hear from most partners is that they focus on just one of these. They don't necessarily focus on all, or they might have some internal projects. For example, I'll point out University of California, Irvine, they've hired a bunch of students to run the social media for their annual giving campaign and have seen some tremendous results from the students, again, handling social media. And so just just close us out. I mean, where to go next? It's really up to you and where you see this potentially fitting in. Uh, if you're not already a partner, I'd love to have the conversation or, or help however we can to uh, identify what, again, this might where this might fit in and, and be useful. I've got a quick little poll as well, if you're uh, still and able to, to just give me a quick understanding of where and how you see uh, micro internships fitting in uh, based on some of these ideas that we've shared. Uh, and again, share this with the various stakeholders, but let us know how we can help. So the, to that end, I'll leave the poll up so that you can take a moment to answer that. But thank you so much for joining our conversation today. If you do have questions about anything that wasn't touched on today, please let me know. I'll stick around for another few minutes or so. I've got my email in the chat as well. Uh, and happy holidays as well, because I'm really uh, hoping you get some restful, uh, it's a restful break uh, for, for each and every one of you. I know we all need it. Um, but again, thank you and appreciate your, uh, your time, support, and partnership.